Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it. I hope you're doing well. Staying safe, taking care of yourself out there. Uh, I'm Jim. If you're new, thanks for coming by. I appreciate it. It's nice to meet you. I make tutorial videos here on YouTube every week showing how I use various tools and software products to edit my images and take the photo that I took and create it into something that I want it to be. So I explore the artistic and the creative and that sort of thing. Today I'm in Luminar 4 and I'm playing around with the gradient masks. Uh, I've been doing more and more videos around masking. I've done uh, several about luminosity masking. I uh, did one about radial masks and now I'm touching on gradient mask. And I may come back and do more. If you want to see more videos on masking, let me know in a comment down below. But let me show you the photo. Here it is. Now the first thing you'll notice is that's really wide. It's not a pano. Um, I shot this with my Sony camera, which is a three to two aspect ratio. But the top part of the sky was just empty, had nothing in it. So I cropped it 21 by nine, which is a fairly newish uh, aspect ratio. I think in the last update when it became Luminar 4.2, I think that's when they added this aspect ratio. But I, I like it. I use it on these kind of shots, especially landscapes. I think it looks really good. Um, and in particular, if you have a bunch of dead space, um, it's good at getting rid of that. So. Um, that's a crop. But anyway, that's my base photo taken in southern England uh, at the Overlook near Eastbourne where a beachy head lighthouse is, if that rings a bell to anybody. Anyway, that's what I started with. It was a nice sunset, not amazing, but I wanted to pop the color and gradient mask is great at allowing me to control different parts of the image. I'll show in a minute. Anyway, that's my starting point and that's my ending point. Very vibrant and colorful and fun. Let me go reset these filters and then we'll start walking through the different edits that I did to get this result. Okay, first things first, um, here I am on my base layer. Again, crop has already been applied. And all I did is I just went to AI Accent and, and took that up about 40, just to kind of brighten the photo a little bit. If you look at the before, it's obviously a little bit darker in the foreground and you can use a gradient mask to fix that. But what I typically do before I know I'm gonna separate areas into masks is I'll go into the light tool or AI Enhance or both and make some minor edits just to tweak the photo to get me to a starting point that I feel like is a better starting point. So I didn't even use the um, light tool here. I just went to AI Accent, brightened it a little bit, and there I was. Now I'm ready to get started. So I'm gonna click and add a new adjustment layer. And this is where I start getting into gradient masking. If I know I'm gonna do a gradient, the first thing I'll do is put the gradient on there. I do the same with radial masks, but luminosity masks, I tend to do the edits and then apply the luminosity mask I don't know, um, maybe I'm weird, but um, gradient mask. So you just click on edit mask, click on gradient. And as you can see, it says click and drag to draw the gradient. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the foreground um, and that is basically the bottom of the frame to the horizon. So click and drag, you can just take your mouse anywhere. And then what you do is you just start dragging up to get the, uh, um, to, you know, to get it in place. And then you have this ability to move this up and down. If you go like that, you're gonna be making the mask come from the top down, but I, I don't want that. I wanna go from the bottom up, which means all my edits are gonna occur in the bottom part of the frame. Also, this area between the center line and these two outer lines is kind of a gradient zone where you get a fading effect um, from, so like my effect is gonna be 100% from this bottom line and below. From the middle line to the bottom line, it's gonna be a gradual uh, uh, increase in the amount. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna collapse that a little bit, actually probably not that much, and I'm gonna move this up and basically put that kind of about like that. Also notice if you get on the center line, you get that little double-headed arrow and that allows you, you can rotate it, that sort of thing. I'm just gonna twist it a little bit and get it kind of close and I'm probably gonna do something about, maybe about like that, I'm not really sure. Um, I think I'm fine, so I'm gonna say done. Now what I wanna do is I'm gonna click on the brush mask because that allows me to get to this masking icon and you can see what I've done. I've painted the bottom of the frame in red and what that means is that's the, the masking area. That's where all the edits that I'm about to apply are gonna be visible. So. In other words, the sky is gonna be untouched and I'm just gonna be uh, painting effects into the bottom of the photo. So I'm gonna turn that off. I'm gonna say done. You will also see here that there's a, a black and white representation of the image. White reveals, black conceals. So my 
images are going to be revealed in the white area because white reveals, which means everything I can uh, am about to do, you will see in the area that's white. And black conceals, which means everything I'm about to do is going to be concealed or hidden or not affecting the area that's in black, which is, of course, the sky. Okay, so let's get over here and do some filters. Once again, I'm going to AI Accent, and I'm going to go to about 23 here. And then I'm going to go to AI Structure and do like a 20... What did I do? Oh, I did a 42. So um, again, working on the lower half of the photo, right, from the horizon and below. AI Enhance is just going to give me better visibility into it. Structure is going to give me a little bit of pop and a little bit of crunch, and that's because there's gravel, there's grass, things like that. I want to create a little bit more... Uh, intensity in that. So if I take this layer and turn it off, if you're looking just at the foreground, you'll see it's a little bit darker and a little bit smoother, really. And now it's a little bit brighter and a little bit crunchier. And that's because of the uh, the two sliders that I've used so far. Next, I'm going to color and I'm going to take this vibrance to like 30, 31, something like that. I'm just trying to give it a pop of color. Uh, you know, this was a sunset, of course, maybe, maybe not of course, but this was a sunset. And with the light coming in, I am going to work on the color tones as you saw in the final result. But I wanted to first apply kind of a, um, not a global vibrance, but global for the masking area, which is the bottom of the frame. So vibrance is going across the entire thing. And then I'm going to go down here to golden hour, and I'm going to pull that up to about 40. So again, with a sunset, I will often use golden hour to enhance that warm light because you expect there to be warm light because it's sunset. Um, and especially with the sun breaking through and I've got that sun ray coming in and that sort of thing, um, it just it just feels right to add a bit of golden hour. So that's kind of my thinking there. And a couple other things. I'm going to go add a little bit of Orton. So not a lot, like 25, I think it was, 28, uh, 29. Okay. And then here's a little thing I've done in a previous video. Hang on, by the way, let me show you Orton effect. There's before and there's after. You can create, see it creates a little bit of contrast, a little bit of shadow. For me, it creates a little bit of mood, and you know, sunset is to me a moody time of day. I like to use Orton to kind of accentuate that. And then here's a fun little filter that I don't use a lot. I've talked about in a couple of videos. It's a great way to enhance uh, an overall color tone, either for an area or, or for an entire photo, and that is photo filter. So I'm gonna come over here. My hue is about a 13, which as you can see, this is a sliding scale of color. So you're basically picking the color that you want, and then the amount, uh, I'm gonna go to about 12. And you can kind of see what that's doing. It's basically creating that warmer look across the bottom of the photo, which to me visually makes sense because the sunlight is coming in and beaming in. It's the last moments of sun. It's blasting kind of across the horizon. You've got a sun ray there, that sort of thing. So let me turn this off and show you. There's the before and after. It's not massive. I mean, you can you could make it more if you wanted. If I went like that, that looks terrible, of course. That's just a whole bunch of red. And all I'm trying to do is warm it up a little bit, give it a little bit of that sunshiny kind of look. Photo filter is great for that. Okay, so at this point, I feel like I'm finished with this layer. That's my foreground layer. So there's the before and the after. Warmed it up, brightened it, added a little bit of moody shadow with the Orton, that sort of thing. But one more time, before and after. Now I'm going to go work on the opposite half of the photo, which is, of course, the top. So instead of masking it again by hand, I'm just going to copy this mask. So I'm going to go over here and say Mask, Copy. And then I'm going to add a new adjustment layer. And I'm going to say... If I can click that, there you go, mask and paste. But of course, it's currently the exact same mask. I want to flip it, so I have to go do one more step, which is mask and then invert. And here's an idea. It makes a lot of sense to come in here and rename these layers. So I'm going to rename this layer, and this is going to be foreground, just to help me keep it straight. And this is going to be sky, just to help me keep it straight. Now, you can kind of tell by looking at the, uh, the mask and what it looks like. Uh, but this is um, an easy way to keep those things straight, right? So the foreground, you can kind of see that there, and now I'm on sky. And again, you've got this uh, black and white rectangle representing your image. Black is concealing or hiding that which is um, in, in black, which is the foreground, right? And the sky is, of course, uh, revealed because it's in white. And if I show you the mask, it's effectively just a flip-flop of the mask I used on the previous layer, which makes sense because I copied pasted and inverted the mask. So I'm gonna say done, and I'm gonna get over here and do some edits. Okay, so now I'm finally getting to the light tool. I didn't use it on the base layer. I didn't use it on the first layer. I didn't use it until I got to this uh, second adjustment layer. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go like a little bit negative here. 
something about like negative 18 and the tint is, I check my notes, I got about a 26 on this. Something I do really on every image, if you watch my videos, you're probably sick of me playing with temperature and tint, but I do it in every photo, it just makes sense. I even do it in monochrome photos, as you may have noticed in my last video, or a couple of videos ago, I think. Um, next, I'm gonna add some smart contrast. I'm going to about 40. Now keep in mind, I'm only working on the sky here, so above the horizon line, and I'm taking highlights down by like a negative 35. So not a massive difference yet, if I show you the before. There we go, you can see the color is a little bit boring, kind of washed out, and after, it's taking on a little bit more of that sunset look, which of course is what I'm going for. I'm gonna to go to Accent AI. Uh, let's see, AI Accent, I should call it. It used to be called Accent AI, and that still sticks in my brain. Um, I go to about a 29 there, and then Sky Enhancer, I'm going to about a 34. So that's having an impact on the photo, as you can see. Let me show you the before. There we go, Sky's a little bit brighter, right? Because I didn't have that sky enhancer, which acts a bit like a polarizer. And after, a little bit more dramatic, which is kind of what I'm going for. Now I'm gonna go to structure, and here I'm going negative 49. So this is something I do a lot. If you've seen my videos, you see me do it all the time. Uh, AI structure is great at adding some crunchiness and that sort of thing. And I used it in the foreground on that previous layer. In this layer, because I'm working only on the sky, I wanted to go negative, which basically is gonna soften it up. Just a personal preference, not something you have to do, but I like to do it because it softens up skies and I just, I kind of have a thing for softer skies. Some of it is because I really like shooting long exposures and long exposures to me is kind of a smooth sky, so I kind of do that a lot. Uh, next up is uh, Landscape Enhancer and I'm going to Golden Hour and I'm going to 50 and I'm trying to get that warm pop, which you can see immediately occurs in the photo. So let me take a look at that. There's before, no warm pop and after, Definitely a warm pop. So I think that's looking pretty good. Um, and really that's it for this layer. So let me go turn this off. There's before this layer, the sky is really kind of flat. And after this layer, taking on a much more colorful pop and looking a bit more like a fun sunset. And so that's really how I use a gradient mask. However, I'm not done with the photo, so, so stick around. What I usually do is I'm masking first the bottom half and separately the, the top half on, that, on these two layers. But then I'm gonna go add a new adjustment layer, and these are my touch-up edits. And this is something I generally do when I'm, uh, I'm, I'm just gonna call it touch-up, touch-up edits. Oh, I misspelled edits. Anyway, you know how to spell edits. Apparently I don't, I'm not gonna take the time to correct that, but um, this is what I normally do after I've done um, different uh, you know layers, and that sort of thing, is I'll often find that I need to do a little bit of touch-up, and so I'll come in and do that. So I'm gonna start here, and I'm gonna go like a negative 15 on temperature. So keep in mind, I'm not masking this layer. These touch-up edits are being applied globally, in other words, across the entire photo. So I've done my separate stuff for the bottom, and then separate stuff for the top. Now I've got it all together, and now I'm saying, okay, I'm gonna apply stuff across the whole thing, which to me helps kind of bring it all together. It's, it's a touch-up edit, so for me it kind of it ties it all, puts a little bow on this little package, right? So um, that's kind of how I look at it. I generally do that after I've done separate things across multiple layers, unless they were very specific and targeted, and so that probably doesn't help, right? I do it, but then I don't always do it. Um, I think I'm 18 here, and highlights is negative 45, and again, that's impacting the entire photo. So there we go, getting a little bit more moody. AI Accent is gonna be 22, which creates a little bit more pop in the photo. Um, keep in mind that uh, AI Accent is, uh, um, you know, it does more than just brighten the photo. I think it's often used to brighten a photo, and frankly, I use it to brighten a photo, and on the base layer, I used it to brighten the photo. Um, but it does other things, it adds a little bit of contrast, does a little pop to color, and that sort of thing. So just keep that in mind. So if you look at the overall photo before AI Accent and then after, it's definitely brighter, it's got a little bit more pop, so just keep that in mind. And then Sky Enhancer, I'm coming back with that again, and because it's AI Sky Enhancer, it recognizes the sky, so it's it's acting like a polarizer filter, as I said before, across the sky, but that's really all it's impacting, because it's just focused on the sky. Um, so there's my photo, and the last thing I did, and some people are not gonna like this move, but I went and got the Sunrays uh, tool, which I absolutely love to use. Um, I think when it first came out, it was a, a bit overdone by a lot of people, including me, I'm part of that group, um, because it was fun and new. So you get a new shiny toy, 
you want to play with it and even if it doesn't make sense. Um, so a lot of us did that, but in this case, I've already got some sun rays, which you can see that were there before I uh, uh, use this filter just to turn it off and prove it to you. I haven't done anything. The amount is still at zero. I have some sun rays, but I want to enhance them a little bit. I just don't want to go over the top. So I'm going to go pretty gentle amount of like four, right? So we're talking very, very small. Uh, the overall look is like 24, 25, something like that. Uh, the sun rays length is like 12. So, whoops, um, I'm pulling this down quite a bit. I don't want to overdo it. I'm not trying to uh, oversell this. And penetration is like a 25 or so. Uh, that looks pretty good. Uh, the number of sun rays, I went up to 77. And that's simply because I like having a lot of sun rays. If I'm going to add the sun, I, mean, I want to make it look like it's a sunburst, right? So uh, here, the radius, I think about a 29 or so. This was like a 39. I have to look at my notes. I can never remember this kind of detail. And this I brought down just a little bit as well. Uh, that was all the uh, same. And then randomized, I went to about 35. So let me show you the before and after of this tool. There's before, there you go. There's before sun rays. Um, and then there's after. It's just a slight enhancement, but I think it adds a little bit to the photo. And let me show you my misspelled touch-up edits layer and what that did to the photo. So I turn that off. That's before I do my touch-up edits. I think the photo looks nice. It's a little tamer. And I, of course, I like mine a little bit punchy. I like my colors and that sort of thing. So there's the before touch-up edits. And there's after, just a little bit more kick to it. And that's really how I got there. So let me show you the before and after. There we go, before. No edits other than the crop and some straightening, I think, uh, and after. And if you do the sliding, you can kind of see that. I mean, you know, we did quite a bit here. And um, I just feel like I really brought the thing to life. And gradient mask is a big part of that. So that's the power and flexibility of gradient mask. They really let you isolate, you know, tops and bottoms. You can also tilt it, as I showed. So if your horizon's not perfectly straight, that's fine. But it works incredibly well on landscapes like this, where you have a perfectly straight horizon, and you can just lay that mask and separately just perfectly take care of the top and the bottom. Of course, it works well in other areas. If you have a mountain range, you can extend the gradient zone so it kind of blends a little bit better there. There's a lot of flexibility with it. It's a great masking tool. I use it quite often, and I just wanted to do another video about it because I haven't done one in a while, and I do get questions. So thank you for watching. I hope it's helpful. Hit the uh, like button, thumbs up, leave a comment, and don't forget to subscribe. And I will be back really soon, my friends, with another video. Thanks for watching. Take care of yourself out there. I'll see you soon, and adios.